Namaste, everyone. Michelle Granberg here. Welcome to another episode of Positive Energy, promoting radical compassion and empathy for all humans and animals. On this show, we're talking about animals used for entertainment. Zoos, petting zoos, aquariums, havens, and other types of places deprive animals of their natural habitat. They are stressful, confining, and boring environments. I'm joined by a local grassroots group that is concerned about the welfare of animals at Johnson Park. Stay tuned to learn how you can help the fight for innocent animals. Positive Energy starts right now. So I'm here with Nick and Ashley and Taylor. Thank you guys for being here on Positive Energy. Thank you for having us. Thank you. So glad that you guys are here. So we're gonna talk about Johnson Park today. Um, and I know that you know, as children, we all visited places like Johnson Park. And when we were children, we loved them. And we loved seeing the animals. I know that I did. But as a compassionate adult, I feel completely differently. And I know that all of you see it differently as well. And that's why we're here to talk about that situation. So Nick, could you start us off by talking a little bit about why confining animals for entertainment is exploitive and harmful, and the difference between you know what a zoo is, what they do, and as it relates to Johnson Park? Sure, sure, absolutely, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you for having us all on the show today. So animals are here with us, not for us. It's pretty simple explanation. Animals are not to be exploited by us. You know, we ought to not ask them for anything. We ought to not ask them to, for us to test on them for vivisection for you know for us to give them their fur their skin for fashion for entertainment which is what we're going after today here at johnson park mm. right they are not here to be um gawked at and have fingers put in front of their own face they are here to live their lives respectfully as we are all here to live our lives on our own accord and most importantly animals are not here for dietary measures as well so where, what is the best environment for animals? So the best environment for animals that I've come across personally are sanctuaries. Sanctuaries take animals. Well, secondary to their own habitat. Yes, absolutely. So sanctuaries do a really good job in mimicking the exact nature of where right. these animals are living in the first place, right? right? So they're not put on concrete embankments. They're not put on put inside of wired or mesh cages. They have roofs on their shelter, unlike what we're seeing here at Johnson Park, quote unquote, Animal Haven. Um, they are free, most importantly, to do as they wish, right? right? right. So when you see They're an not animal, forced to work, they're not forced to do anything. Exactly. So if an animal wants to interact with myself or the rest of the group here, the animal is going to come up to us and the animal is going to choose to have that interaction because that animal wants to genuinely have that interaction. Right. Now here in a place like Johnson Park, which some people in the past have identified it as being a sanctuary, as being a haven, mm -hmm as being a zoo, the animals are forced in a very small, condensed, tight space to where they can't get away from us humans who are coming to the park to interact, right? So whether the animal wants to really be a part of the interaction and whether the animal wants to be included in the individual or the groups of people that are coming, such as families, entertainment, they have no choice, they have no say in the matter. And with a sanctuary, you're just not gonna get that, you know? Yeah, so there's a big difference between a zoo and a sanctuary, and I appreciate that you may, you're making that distinction. So we're talking today about why we'd like to close Johnson Park, but some people want it to remain open. So, so Ashley, can you speak to that? Why do some people in the public want it to remain open? Sure, um, you know, I've heard a number of reasons from people who want the Animal Haven to remain open, mm -hmm. um, mainly centering around their own wishes, their own desires, um, saying things like, you know, I have great memories of coming here when I was a child, saying things like, you know, it's hard to get my children to put down their electronics and this is something we can do outside. Um, so 
there are many reasons like that. Um, but I thought it was interesting that you brought up, you know, that we've gone to these places as children and had great memories, because I happen to have grown up within walking distance of Johnson Park Animal Haven. And there have always been situations with the animals there that were heartbreaking. Um, there was a famous bear who lived there called Monty the Bear. He had been taken by a hunter as a cub from Canada and brought um, to live in this man's basement, I believe in South Plainfield. Then at a year old, he was too big to live in the basement, so they brought him to the animal haven. And they put him in a cage that was 18 by 25, which I think is just the size of this room here, and as well to the ceiling, same size. And he spent the rest of his life there. I don't know if he ever had the door opened ever again once he was put in there. So a full room bear. And one of my earliest memories of literally my entire life was the bear banging his head on the concrete. Wow. So that's what he would do. Um, he would bang his head on the concrete or he would sway his head back and forth. And when you're four years old, five years old, you can already tell that's not normal. Um, it's frightening. And I remember my mom explaining to me, um, and my mom is, by the way, the polar opposite of what you would call a liberal or progressive person. She's a very compassionate person, but she's not anyone who would say, um, be out there picketing for animals. But she was one who explained to me, she said, I said, mom, why is the bear hitting his head on the concrete? Mm. And she said, it's because he's sick. And I said, why is he sick? And she said, it's because he's gone crazy. He's gone stir crazy. Um, so that's, you know, that's the history of where this animal haven is coming from over the decades. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, over the years, because it's in a floodplain, um, it's actually designated by FEMA as a floodway, which is, um, you know, the area surrounding a river that floods naturally pass through. When there's rainfall, the, the river swells up. It doesn't even take a big storm. It can take a high tide sometimes because Raritan River is a tidal river. Um, over the years, that animal haven has flooded so many times. Um, the most egregious example that I can remember, 1999, um, nine horses drowned in Johnson Park Animal Haven because the level of the flood went over the roof of their barn in Hurricane Floyd. Um, and there's actually a Rutgers University dormitory across the river from where the horses were. They could hear the horses screaming while they were drowning. Um, I was told by someone who identified himself as an ex-associate of the park, who was in favor of the animals remaining there, said that the workers went up on the roof of the barn once they realized that um, the horses would drown and tried to drill in through the roof to get to them. One horse survived because it had been on a treadmill um, in its stall, so it was able to stand up on the treadmill and keep its head above the water, so that horse survived. The county was sued by the owners of these horses. They were privately owned um, and supposed to be managed by a third party, not necessarily the park or the county. And there was some form of mis miscommunication or just nobody took the responsibility properly of evacuating the horses, so nobody did it. Um, and so owners sued the county, they won. And after that, um, I think everyone just assumed that it would never happen again because, gosh, you have eight or nine horses drown in a barn mm -hmm. in this flood zone that you know FEMA designated flood zone. Um, there's absolutely no debate by anyone that it's a flood zone. So I think everyone just sort of thought, of course they'll put together um, an evacuation plan or of course they'll remove these animals to somewhere that's safe. And I think, so we were all kind of like sleeping on that for a while, I mm -hmm. think. So fast forward to um, September of last year when Hurricane Ida happened, it never occurred to me that their plan was to just leave the animals there during the hurricane. I, I literally didn't even think of that as a possibility. So I remember, um, you know, I was online and people started posting pictures of these animals. The animals are coming up to their neck there's, you know, a sort of notorious picture we have of the deer up to its neck in the water. And people were saying to each other, gosh, are they really just planning to leave these animals here? What's going on? People were down at the park, you know, obviously the people taking the pictures, then the people seeing the pictures, and others started coming down to the park trying to find out what was going on. So the result was, yes, they let, their plan was to just leave the animals. There, as far as I can tell, the plan was to leave the animals. So at some point, um, I believe it was that during that night, um, while the flooding was taking place and the flooding was already high, 
I think it was realized that the animals were going to drown in the park. Um, and so then at that point, I think that workers were trying to, at that point, get to them, move them, do whatever they could from then on to get them out to safety. And then, um, so of course, the people who were, had been aware of this the whole time went there the next day just to see, well, are they okay? What, what has happened to them? And we immediately noticed that over a dozen animals were missing. And these are not like subtle animals. These are fallow deer. Fallow deer are white, white deer. They look like albinos. Um, they're extremely exotic. So when half of your very exotic herd is missing, including five healthy babies, um, that's extremely noticeable to people, including the fact that the next day we actually found a survivor running around Highland Park, which is a town away. Um, so the, the Parks Department put out a statement. Everyone was, was emailing the Parks Department saying, what's going on? What happened to these animals? Another of our friends noticed a goat was missing. She immediately identified which one was missing. So we were waiting for this response from the Parks Department, and it came, and the statement said something to the effect of, all animals in our care are accounted for and are being fed and provided fresh water daily. So that was just shocking. Um, you know, I think nobody was expecting just a blatant denial. That I think that was the last thing people were expecting, because when you can see the reality with your own eyes when you have pictures in your phone all summer of the animals and the cute white babies, the albino looking babies, you have pictures the whole summer of the goats that were giving birth so you know how many goats were there. Mm -hmm. And you can see that a dozen of them are, and more are gone. And someone says, oh no, they're all accounted for. And you go there and look and you know your number is right. Then that makes people freak out. Um, so I think people freaked out at that point. And immediately, um, people started writing petitions. The first petition, um, I think there were two, and they ended up gaining a total of 10,000 signatures, over 10,000 at this point. Um, I think the bigger one has, I think the bigger one has 7,000, something like that. Yeah, so I think it's 8,000 and 2,000 um, about uh, two weeks ago. That was, that was what right. it stood at. And so, um, so right away, people were sort of saying, we're not going to accept this explanation that there, oh, nothing to see here, nothing happened whatsoever. We obviously know something happened. And even if you claim that no animals died, it's how can you le just leave animals in a f what you know yeah. is a floodplain during a hurricane? Something, at some point that means someone dropped the ball on their responsibility because if you wanna be the custodian of these animals, you can't just do things like that. I really thank you guys for rallying and organizing of around course. this. Yes. Instead of just saying who else is gonna take care of them as you sort of point the figure toward yourself and began to step in. And yes. So Taylor, what do you remember and when did you step in and what, is, what, have, what have you all been doing since then? Um, yeah, I, uh, I agree with, um, with Ashley's account of things um, and learning more about the history of this place has been um, appalling and exhausting, right? Um, everything that we find is worse than the last thing we found. Um, if you Google any information, it just comes back worse, right? Um, I, I initially um, noticed the Animal Haven uh, because I commute right past it. And I've always um, been a fan of animals. I love animals. I love, uh, you know, I have a rescue dog and I uh, all sorts of, you know, animal lover things to do. But I noticed them and I saw they look sad. So I don't want to go there, right? Like that looks like a really sad place. I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, then they look sad. The, the enclosures are very small and they're trying to fit two horses in, in a, a, a small shed size barn. It's, it, it's very, it's, Everything was seemingly inadequate and everything looked sad. But finally, when Ida happened, it seemed like people were actually going to be um, ready to do something about this place. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I knew I'd, I was going to step in as well. Um, Ashley was organizing um, a uh, group of people. And so I, I was just said, you know, I'm here for whatever you need. Um, since then, it's been a lot of um, trying to uh, rally people, but also um, a lot of government and uh, a lot of bureaucracy, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, so we do have the petitions. Um, out of those 10,000 signatures, 2,000 are Middlesex County residents. When we found out that the park was a Middlesex County park, we realized that uh, the county was actually the, the entity responsible for these animals. Um, so we uh, initially um, had a pro some protests, we had the petitions, we were writing emails to the uh, county commissioners, 
Um, and uh, in October, they said, um, actually, yeah, we're going to close the zoo. Right. And we all thought, great, like, wonderful. We, we had put together a list of uh, sanctuaries for Four, all 80 14 animals. 14 animal sanctuaries stepped up and said, yeah. we'll take these animals. Yeah, and we got commitment letters for all of these uh, different animals. And, um, and we submitted that to the county, and the county said, yes, we're going to do this plan that you've come up with. And we thought, that's, that's amazing, that's wonderful. Um, I think that it was a commissioner's meeting um, directly following that decision. Uh, where a lot of the um, workers, kind of like family and friends, um, some zoo workers themselves, um, came to the commissioner's meeting and said, actually, we would like this place to stay there. Um, we have, we see value in keeping these animals. Um, and the uh, county waited until after the election because they knew what one of our protest techniques was to say, like, we, you, you're, you have an election coming up. Right. Um, they waited until after the election and they rescinded the decision to close the zoo. Um, at this point, they are uh, in the process of having an independent consult um, look and see what we can do uh, with the park, um, if it's plausible to keep the animals there, how much it would cost. Uh, we actually don't know the, the scope of that like entirely because they've been kind of not very transparent about um, that process at all. Uh, so we actually don't know where our tax money is going at this point, which is also scary as a citizen, right? Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's been a whole lot of um, kind of just trying to um, also just kind of make people care about this issue, which is yeah. kind of frustrating. With, well, thank with you for your, your tireless work on this Thanks. and constant work. And so we do want to say some of the animals did make it to the sanctuary. They did. Yes. Um, two pigs and uh, the ram. Uh, made it to Uncle Neil's home, yes. and uh, Milton the goat made it to Goats of Anarchy, yes. and they're all doing really, Amazing. really well, and people can check out on social media, and they're very transparent about how well they're doing. So Nick, do you want to, what would you like to add to all of that? So I would like to add that there has been, <clears throat> on record, five hurricanes that have happened in the last 22 years. and. For the time frame of those 22 years, the animals that were there at this quote unquote haven, right, are emotionally scorned from the trauma, are, you know, suffer physically from some kind of illness that has occurred due to the event of the hurricane itself. And it's something that can be very simply avoided by just closing down the park and relocating the animals. I would also just add that the 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 flood zone is the the impetus for all of this, right? Mm -hmm. And the flooding is is the most immediate danger to these animals. But it's become clear since we started investigating this place that uh, the this is just not a good place for animals to begin with, right? right. If it was not in a flood Absolutely. zone, this would also right. be a problem. A lot of these animals um, are arthritic, are um, uh, have are actually getting worse um, in their their kind of lack of mobility. Um, that was one thing that uh, that when uh, the animals went to um, Uncle Neil's home sanctuary, they were uh, appalled to see that the, the animals weren't walking mm -hmm. very well. Um, that was a common theme for the for the animals. And also, um, just to uh, <laughs> go back to Monty the bear for a yeah. second, um, and he's uh, been gone for, for decades. Um, but uh, I do want to just say that his cause of death was was kidney disease. He was diabetic. Right. Um, one thing that is has been true for this entire time, all of these years, is that the public can go and feed these animals anything they want, and they do. They do. So um, there are some people that just give them, you know, carrots, and and even that would be, you know, in excess of their diet. But there are also people who go in and throw french fries, right. donuts, sandwiches. We've seen all of these things. Entire right McDonald's Whoppers yeah, wrapped. Yeah, right. just, yeah, just right. Um, right. I, it's, it's kind of, it's disgusting really what, yeah. what people will, will give these animals. Um, and in, just in, in that alone, I think um, there's a case to just get these animals out of the hands of the county because it is obviously not responsible. Going yeah. to what Taylor said, um, one of the pigs who was rescued by Uncle Neil's home was fat blind, which means he was so obese that his fat was actually covering his eyes and he couldn't see anything. 
Um, and so they had to put him on a healthy diet. And he finally, we just saw a picture of him. He can open his eyes now, which is wonderful. He was stepping on his own belly, walking on his own belly, which was dragging on the ground. And it seems like the park saw nothing wrong with that. They saw nothing wrong with an animal being so obese that he was blinded by his own fat. Um, and so I just think, how can you leave animals in the care of people who think that's fine? Right, as, the, as their stewards. So if people are listening to this right now and they're getting concerned by listening to what you're saying, how about each of you give something that people can do? Like people want to take some action. What can they do? Nick, what can they do? So we have two petitions on change.org where you can sign and show your support that way. But more importantly, we do have a commissioner's meeting this um, this upcoming Thursday. I believe that is the 17th at 7 p.m. that you can attend. And if you cannot attend that, um, we have another date because they are bi-monthly. Uh, that will be the 31st at the end of this month that you can attend to speak out. So each person, whether you're a constituent or not, you're allowed allotted five minutes of time to speak on behalf of the animals. So my biggest thing to people today that are out here listening is to use your human privilege. Use your voice that you have that you are born with in order to speak up for the voiceless because these animals, they can't defend themselves. Thank We're essentially all that they have. Well, thank you, Nick. That's beautifully put. Do you guys want to add anything to that? Absolutely. What do you want to ask the public to do? Sure. Um, I would just agree with Nick. Um, I would say that because this zoo is under the purview of Middlesex County, the Middlesex County commissioners are the ones who are making the decisions on this zoo. Mm -hmm. um, they are the ones who initially said that they were willing to close the animal haven and release the animals to sanctuaries. They are also the ones who then heard from their employees, associates, um, went back on that. Um, mm -hmm. So they, if you can contact them, you can email them, you can come to the commissioner's meetings, as Nick stated, especially if you're a resident of Middlesex County, but even if you're not. Um, we have gotten a little bit of um, uh, talk from them stating that, you know, well, a lot of the people who come and speak here are not from the county. We want people from Middlesex County. But, you know, it's great if you're from Middlesex County, but I think the fact that so many people care so mm. much about this, we've had people driving from Philadelphia, many people driving from Philadelphia, just speaks to how bad this whole situation is that it would inspire so many people to take their time and their effort and their gas money, which we know is insane, to come here on behalf of these animals. So, so yes, I agree with Nick. Yeah. In some ways, it's amazing that we're even still talking about this. Why are we right. even talking about it? Why is it not already done? Yeah. That's the question. Do you question. want to add anything yeah. to that, Taylor? Um, I would just agree that um, if, especially if you're in Middlesex County or you know somebody in Middlesex County, um, make sure that they are on board with um, the petition, with coming to the commissioner's meetings, um, get as involved as you can. Um, I think one of the things that one of the strategies right now is moving the animals to the two other animal havens that they have in Middlesex County. Um, which is incredibly frustrating because the, they're in the same under the same um, you know uh, watch, right? So they have a uh, they have two other facilities exactly like this um, where we also would need eyes on the ground, right? So That's I think just kind of looking at those places and also just if you're nowhere near here, just looking at where, wherever whatever zoo you have ne nearby, right? Yes. Every town seems to have one of these weird places where animals kind of go to be sad. I think. And I would also say, just to add on to what Taylor mentioned, there are two other animal havens. Well, I think one is an animal haven, one is classified as something else. Um, but there's one in Merrill Park. The one in Merrill Park is actually the only place where they've admitted an animal drowned during mm -hmm. Hurricane Ida. Mm -hmm. So they haven't admitted any of the Johnson animals drowned, but they did admit one in Merrill Park. And yet Merrill Park is where they're transferring some of these animals supposedly to be temporarily safe from any flooding that may occur. So. Um, Obviously, that's not great, so we'd like to oppose that as well. And so, yeah. I'm sorry, real quick. Go ahead, Nick. So, <clears throat> I'm telling everybody to show up to the Board of Commissioners meeting, but I'm not giving you guys the address. <laughs> 75 Baird Street. It's the New Brunswick Administrative Building in New Brunswick, New Jersey. And just to add real quick to what Ashley had said, so we, are, we have been and are investigating the lack of transparency that Middlesex County has been giving us 
on behalf of two missing pigs, five baby fallow deer, and 15 rabbits that are left unaccounted for. And we just, no answers. We found out again, right, that um, one of the missing pigs died in January. That's just the one now. who had a heart attack. Yeah. So we've had to, just. because they have had such a lack of transparency, we have had to make so many OPRA requests, Open Public Records Act requests, where if something is classified as a public record by the state, as a citizen, you're legally entitled to get a copy of it. The county has to provide it to you. Um, and we have been stonewall delayed um, in getting these records that we're entitled to as citizens, but eventually they come to us. And one of the records we just got stated that one of the missing pigs that we've asked for his whereabouts for months, um, they knew, they knew he was dead. Um, he died in January, but um, did not feel it was necessary to tell us about it. So mm. it continues. And wow. I, I think just on, on that, I think it's just important when journalists and news outlets and places like yourself will yes. take us seriously yes. and, and give us a platform. I think that that's really important. So mm. if there's any uh, other ones watching, I would say. Please, please um, reach also out. Also do some of this journalism as well because it is, it's really important stuff. Um, and at, at the end of the day, we're kind of a group of citizens that right. they're not going to, they're going to take a, a news story very seriously. Right. Um, yeah, it's, yeah. I don't know how you, I mean, it's sort of depressing. It it, is. This is all yeah. very depressing. It is. You, your eyes are on the front line, and 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 we want to stay hopeful. So, are right. you? We only have actually a couple of minutes now. Oh but yes. What like message of yes. hope? Oh, we yes. want to kind oh, of end this on. Okay. It's still hopeful. I will, I will give you. I will give you a message of hope. Everyone who I have ever spoken to about this issue who is not personally affiliated with Johnson Park or the county is a thousand percent in favor of closing this animal haven. Like I said, I grew up in Highland Park, the town just next door to the animal haven. So all the people I grew up with grew up as kids going to this park. And I said to them, um, you know, what do you think about this park? They said, it's disgusting. They said, it's always been disgusting. They said, it's still open? Why is that place still open? Um, so that's the message of hope, which is that people who know about this place and don't have direct benefit from it all want it to be closed, mm, yeah. but um, you know the word has to get out there. M many people don't even know about this place, and the people who do assume that it g was gotten rid of long ago. Yeah. So, wow. so wow. that's what I would say. I, okay. I, would, I would add to that, and I would just say we've we've gotten animals out. Yes. Um, we've improved the living conditions of the animals yes. in there. Um, their water bowls were frozen. Um, solid when it right. was freezing at the beginning of the winter. Right. Um, we, we made sure that they uh, at least are changing the water. Um, right. it, uh, just a lot of eyes on the ground yeah. um, yes. have meant a lot for We can animals. make a difference. You guys yes. have yes. made a difference. Yes. We need more people. We need a yes. critical mass. Yes. We still want to continue to take action. Any, any final words, Nick? Yeah, you know, I just want to put the projection on news media. It's so prominent that news media, News Channel 12, Star Ledger, Home News Tribune, that we all get involved with this because when the camera goes on, the narration, the storyline changes. Right. And what we once thought it was is not what it actually is. So please, news forecasters, anchors, get involved with us. You can find us on social media. Um, Friends of Johnson Park, we are on Facebook. We have a, a Facebook page. You can go and like us um, for any uh, news updates or to message us to get in involved further. Um, we appreciate anyone uh, inside or outside of the county to, to uh, lend support or help. Um, we always need just, you know, a, a, a lot of uh, boots on the ground. Yeah. Thank you guys for starting this. I really appreciate thank it. You. Thank, thank you for being thank here you. today. Thank We're you. out of time, but people, I hope that they will reach out to you. So thank you all so thank much. You so thank much. you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. We're wrapping up another enlightening show. I'd like to close with a Sanskrit mantra, Loka Samasta Sukhi No Bhavantu, which translates to, may all beings everywhere be happy and free, and may the thoughts, words, and actions of my own life contribute in some way to that happiness and to that freedom for all. Thank you, Monday Morning Flowers, for the beautiful floral arrangement. Thank you for watching. Check out michellegranberg.com, go vegan, and join me next time on Positive Energy.